Hello, so as lots of you know, I like Geiger counters. However, this is the first Geiger counter I have ever used that itself is horribly radioactive. So this is a Soviet DP-63A. Now from what I can gather about these, these are basically designed to be very portable civil defence Geiger counters that went from 0 to 1.5 Röntgen and then 0 to 50 Röntgen depending on which GM tube you're using. However, these aren't as practical for most people as DP-5 um, Geiger's counter series for two reasons. One, um, you'll have a much harder time getting this to run, because it uses obsolete batteries like the DP5. This one has a much more annoying sort of, um, I'll show you, sort of actual section where you put the batteries, where it's much harder to get other sort of batteries that are similar enough sizes to fit in and work. So there you go, there's its weird old battery compartment. It takes, um, are they LR123s? I can't remember the name of it, but it's some weird old Soviet battery, where it's kind of like fatter than a AA by quite a bit. Uh, taller than a AA, but thinner than a D battery. Uh, it's probably size-wise close to an 18650, but obviously a lower voltage than an 18650. So there's that. So what you'd have had is just the two batteries sitting there. So when it was good and new at the time, that was very simple to operate. Now, the annoying thing about this, which means I can't really show it you even though this still works, because I connected it all up to my variable voltage transformer, and it still works. This doesn't actually stay on when you uh, turn it on, and this is by design. I think it's to stop, um, you know, silly Russian peasant running down the batteries. So how this works is basically when it's turned on, you've got these buttons here, you've got this one, and that one. And what you do is basically hold this one down when you want to take a reading using that measurement, hold this one down when you want to take the 50 Röntgen measurement, and then it powers the particular tube up to do it. So I guess that's to save battery in case, oh no, I forgot to switch Geiger counter off, my battery is dead. Um, but this is quite a cool design because, again, there's no reason with Geiger counters why you can't simply have a actual um, Geiger with the GM tubes built in. So I've unscrewed all the casing so you get to see inside. Um, but yes, going back to, this is a very radioactive Geiger counter, why is that? Now, if I put the audio on the therapy, you'll be able to hear this. So let's put the audio on. And let's put this near the Geiger counter. And I need to go back onto the correct mode. Dose rate, there we go. Oh dear. Now some of you might be able to guess why that is. Um, and there is actually a check source inside here, but it's not the check source doing that. So anyway, let's open it up and show you. So the check source is quite neat. The check source is when it's in its case, you have a button here, and that's a spring-loaded bit that exposes strontium-90. Now, if I put this here, You'd be forgiven for thinking nearly all the beeping is coming from this check source here. So let me just try and turn this around where you can see it, and then I'll flip it open. So don't get me wrong, this is active, look. But it's not that active. It's about 15 microsieverts worth of active. That's strontium-90 in there. That was originally probably quite strong, because you can see how wide a bit of strontium-90 is on a little strip. Basically how this works is there's a little beta window in here um, and that's designed so when you've got it in your case you can put it down on something to take a beta reading quite clever because again it's internal tubes. But no, the actual really really hot reading is coming from this um, and that is because they decided to put a massive bit of radium paint behind the screen so it would glow in the dark. So radioactive that when I've seen videos where people have taken these radium screens out they're about one Röntgen per hour in terms of combined alpha, beta and gamma readings coming off of it. Actually, I think some people are saying it's just the beta and gamma that gives it like a one Röntgen per hour. So it gives you an idea of just how much radium paint they put on this. Anyway, let's turn the therapy off from squawking a minute so you can see it. So basically, it's quite a nice little unit. It just has two GM tubes that sit there. So if I turn it the correct way up, you'll see one of them says 50, one says 1.5. The 1.5 Röntgen tube is the bottom one there, which I assume is the only one that takes a beta reading and then the one above it is the 50 Röntgen per hour tube. Now these are very um, old different kind of Soviet tubes because um, if you're familiar with more modern Geiger counter tubes or even Soviet ones uh, they didn't have the little bit where they used to fill them up there. They used to be quite you know standard tubes so this is like a prior to an SBM20 Geiger. Um, but yeah the actual unit itself is really compact and light. I really like it. So What's a shame, I think, is they didn't make something like this with a proper on-off switch um, with a wider, basically, tube range. Because what would have been nice is if they did a big sort of milli-Rontgen per hour tube there. I know that one does do milli-Rontgens because the middle of it is 0 0.5. So, you know, half a Rontgen per hour. 
but you know, it'd be nice if they did a GM tube on this that was, um, you know, more like an SBM20 that could do a melee Ronkin range, probably into the low Ronkin per hour range. Anyway, it is what it is, and it's an old Cold War relic from the early 1960s. There you go, you can see all the electronics inside it. Very compact and nicely put together. Um, has a nice little carrying case for it as well. So how it would work, obviously, you would have this in its carrying case. So let's put that back in the right way around. He says we'll put it in the wrong way around. So I'm not going to screw this all back together again, because um, I'm going to be dismantling it as soon as I've done this video on it, to get the radium check source out. Well, it's not even a check source, it's a very hot bit of radium, but how this works is this would sit in a case like that, and you can access the check source button there. Um, so that would sit neatly in there, and then, yep, you could just have it round your neck, like that, and then you could just literally look down, hold the button, and see what your reading was. So yeah, these are actually really practical in terms of... Um, you know, just being good for reading. So I mean, look how small this is compared to a DP5, and that's mostly because there's no wand on it. Everything's built into the unit itself. So for something built in the 1960s, this was a really clever sort of Geiger counter design. The only thing I don't like is constantly hold down the button to take a reading, especially because you need to hold the button down a while for the tubes to warm up and therefore get your reading. Um, so you know, that wasn't all that cleverly designed in that regard, but I guess they designed it like that because stupid peasant is gonna run the batteries flat because it will leave the switch on. Also, very thick old manual, so there we go, CCCP, DP63A, no idea what that says, but yeah, let's have a flick through the little manual. Loads and loads of information in here, they didn't re really didn't skimp on the details in this one. Uh, stuff about the gem tubes, so when was this last looked at? 1968 there, um, 1968, people's names have been blanked out. Yeah, so they'd have had all like, you know, the check sheets and that for it, but... Oh, there's even some nice schematic kind of pictures in here. Oh, is that a circuit diagram? Oh, it is. Yeah, look at that. So, lovely old manual for this. This is a really nice sort of collector's item, and I managed to get somebody in Ukraine who was selling this, and I think with postage and conversion, it came within about a week and a half of ordering it, and it was like £70, so to me that's a bloody bargain for something like this. But yeah, the main reason I wanted one of these, and it might sound weird, is to get the radium out. The reason being, that radium screen in there, when I get out, is going to be a lovely check source, as in, put it in a couple of plastic bags so no paint's going to flake anywhere, you know, keep it in a lead container or shielded container when you're not using it, but when you want to check a Geiger, something that literally gives off one wrong gun per hour is amazing, you know, point blank. So, um, that's the video on this. I hope you found it interesting. So, DP63, quite a clever design. Again, due to the batteries, it's not very suitable today. You know, and as I've said before, just literally buying something like a Therapy if you want a portable little Geiger that does extreme ranges of radiation. Um, but, you know, this is very clever for what it is. And I think it's a shame in the Cold War, more nations didn't actually think, just put GM tubes inside the housing unit. Because again, I know with that way you've not got a wand that you can hold away from your body to take a reading, but for little portable sort of civil defence or military units, it makes a lot of sense to have a very compact little kind of bakelite, you know, bakelite or aluminium housing, and then just put a GM tube or two inside it, so you can take a reading, you know, without taking all the case apart and doing that. So yeah, this is what it is. Um, as said, I powered it with a variable voltage transformer, it's really hard to demonstrate that on camera. But it did in fact work. I put on a couple of Strontium 90 sources I have, turned it on and the low range tube got to about, I think it was about 300 or 400 milli Ronkin per hour. And that was two Strontium 90 sources right next to each other, point blank on the GM tube. So this does work still, but again, I wouldn't really recommend these for use. And also be careful because if you buy one of these, and it's got that radium in there, and you do this, looking at the reading, you are shooting God knows how much radiation into your eyes. Um, so yes, again, <laughs> quite a nice little design, but if we just put the audio back on, very, very radioactive. So if I just, this is with it still in the case and the glass and everything on there, but yeah, look at that. I have never seen a Geiger counter give off so much radiation, and that's not even the check source. Weirdly, that radium didn't interfere with the readings, I don't know why, I assume it's just because there was enough components and space between it and the um, GM tubes. I'm kind of interested in that now. I suppose that big plate there might have done that, but yeah. Interesting design, but now I'm going to take some radium out.